when did the drinks arrive? Oh, they're well, coming, they're coming baby. baby. Let's start with Phil saying when did the drinks <laughs> arrive. That's perfect. Our Take buddy, it again. Our buddy Phil Hanley is in the building. Hey, one PH. Of our, one of our best buds. Balanced. Yeah, I am. Uh, this is the this is the first time I've ever been excited to do a uh, podcast. How do you, you like always, that? You always dread doing pods, right? Oh, I do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're fun when you get there, but I'm it injured my back. And alcohol helps. Yeah. And I generally can't drink this early, so I'm excited. How'd you injure? It, it's been fine for like six years or something like that. And I flew four times last week. Ugh. And then I, my back was like a little funky. And then I stretched the shit out of it. And it's like, yeah. Wait, do you stretch it or you get a, a, a helper? I normally, well, like pre pandemic, I'd like work out and stretch and do all that shit. And then uh -huh. I haven't been. And uh, wow, this guy's going to town on these cocktails. He's a pro, man. Yeah. He's a mixologist. You're, and you're a Negroni guy. Like when I think Negroni, I think Phil. Yeah, it's my favorite beverage. You're either drinking a scotch or a Negroni. Yeah, yeah. Glenfiddich. Right. He, either, he either drinks a Glenfiddich on the rocks. McAllen? No, no you're not a Glenfiddich. Oh, I yeah. like McAllen. Okay. Do you? Oh, yeah. People buy me McCallum sometimes because they don't know the difference. But, yeah, it's... Oh, thank you so much. Ooh, thank you, Beer Jew. <laughs> Look at that. That looks good, dude. Well done with the twist. Yeah, love the twist. Oh, uh, yours is, is submerged. I think that's the move. Isn't that the move? Well, I like to put it on the side, and then you can drop it in if you like. I mean, smell oh. that. that. That's a smell right there. Yeah. Nice I like giving the off. You know? Yeah. Oh, my God. Ooh, that smells perfect. Holy I shit. Think pubes too. Yeah, those are those are mine just for you. <laughs> I, I think you said pubes that. for a second. Yeah, That's sweet what I heard. Pubes, dude. <laughs> what is that? A great those, one? Those are great too, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is, this is not I mean something about a Negroni in the summer just hits. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Wow, that's great, man. Look at that. Color too. Perfect redness. Not too thick. That's not a good too drink. Thin. Yeah. Cheers. Well Mazel. done. Beer Jew. Beer Jew. Beer Jew. And for the folks at home, I think that just the one secret to like really upgrading your Negroni game or your Manhattans in general is to get a nice sweet vermouth. That's what I have in my fridge. I really like vermouth. using Carpano Antica. This is like the one that you'll find the uh, most common. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We, we were raising our classy level for a second with him explaining vermouth. Yeah, and then Mark just brought it. us right yeah, back down. Yeah, I mean, hey, the high-low yeah. lifestyle, you know. But yeah, Carpano Antica, if you want to up your game, go grab it. It's the easiest to find and the best uh, <laughs> quality. <laughs> if I smell that. No, uh, absolutely. So this is the thing. You're supposed to put vermouth. Vermouth in the fridge, right? And people yeah. don't know that. Yes, you refrigerate oh, really? your vermouth. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. It can last for a little while outside, but after a while, it'll go funky. <laughs> oh, he's a, he's a, transitioning back into like uh, <laughs> foodie mode. Yeah. yeah. He's like, oh, no. mm -hmm. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, because after a while outside, it'll smell like one of Mark's farts. So keep it in the fridge. <laughs> Good okay. to know. Great note. What's in a what's in what is vermouth? Great is it question. Liquor or liquor vermouth or? is like a super super uh, like concentrated sweet wine. Ah, I never knew that. Okay, mm. all right. That's why like over time it turns a little bitter, but still keeps its uh, sweetness. All okay, right. cool. Just like, just like a comedian. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Hey, uh, dude. Yeah, that's like Hanley's go-to drink, man. It's good. It's good to have you here. You're like you're like one of the first guess we want but you wanted to wait till you had a yeah. special to promote which is now available on youtube yeah How about that it came out september 22nd hell yeah oh, yeah shit. great we special we were both Thanks. there okay you yeah, were you, you killed it you were there not i uh you were both there and i remember being on stage in the second show and being like oh this is i feel like this is good Cause, you know nerve-wracking it is doing a special and i was like oh, i think this is you know i think it's a, we got it and i looked over and i could see uh you cracking up uh yeah well you know what's great is we always talk about this our friends were also busy which is good but we used to see each other all the time watching sets all the time all, always in the same room and now we're always on the road we're running around we're doing pods so it's all fresh the material i've never heard it so i get to just laugh and enjoy it like an audience yeah it's funny because it and the beauty of that is the people that you respect most like you got you'll see a set and i'll be like oh fuck i did so much old shit tonight right. and then you guys haven't seen it in so long you're like oh i love that new band you're like oh thanks meanwhile <laughs> it's like a year and a half on the road like tight and of ready course, to go of course yeah and then you think man i suck but you realize this guy's been doing that bit since 88 yeah <laughs> yeah i got busted from sam uh last week because i 
I was dicking around for most of the set. I was trying new stuff, and then I closed with uh, an older joke, and I came off. Sam's like, "Oh, that was you know a great set or whatever." That was like you know, uh, and I was like, "Yeah, I was kind of dicking around." He goes, "Didn't wasn't that your closer from your special?" Oh, <laughs> I was just fucking with. Oh, oh, but it was my closer because he goes, because he goes, uh, "Yeah, I was just kind of trying some stuff out." I was like, "I think that was your closer <laughs> from your, from your hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but he was just trying to get off stage. But sure, like, I had sure. to fuck with him. Yeah. But yeah, I mean that's the fun too. Is like you know we're all on the road so much that like you know we were at the cellar on a weekend together and it's yeah. like holy shit that's how you kind of dream it up when you're a kid yeah the three of us in yes the cellar. hell you know, yeah that never happens and i will say my you two are my two first uh comedian friends in new york city here here i felt like norman greeted me when i got off the plane <laughs> i tried yeah i like to welcome <laughs> yeah very welcoming and then you used to walk around in that little paper boy hat remember? <laughs> during the day the yeah. Newsy hat. oh yeah. yeah i forgot about that i just chalked it up to canadian <laughs> yeah, no. and then sam and i when i first like moved moved here uh we lived across the street from each other we what? That little, yeah you remember yeah. that in Brooklyn. oh williamsburg in yeah we, we used to go to the same coffee place you and i with that special little coffee yeah place. it was so good it was like our afternoon thing yeah we we'd walk over place. But I, when I met, so Norman was so friendly when I first got to town, but Sam was like a love at first sight thing. Cause we were playing that crazy show. Remember that show? Low, uh, low. Low, low and Esme. Yeah. Was, oh, with that Pauly motherfucker. Yeah. Pauly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, a, it was like six people in the crowd. There was a huge screen and there was like aerobics being yes. played in the background. Yes. So you'd be on Not stage. Not a good idea. No, show. it'd be like a woman's ass right where your face was. Very which, distracting. You know, it was a post-show thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, it, so it'd be so fucking distracting. It was 80s aerobics. But anyways, I remember seeing Sam and I'd probably been in the city for like a few months, whatever, and seeing Sam and it was like, holy fuck, this guy's got bits. Yeah, you had bits. We still do, but like back oh, then, yeah. it was I was so blown away because it's so rare. You see so many comics, but so few of them. You're like, holy fuck! Yeah, yeah. I think there were like eight people in that crowd too. Yeah. I think we bonded because you were like, I got to do this college, and I, I, I remember that a little bit. And yeah, that was a weird show because John Pally, who would run the show, he'd have the aerobics on the background. Yeah. The show was called Buns and Puns. That's yeah. right. He would walk around with Jello shots yeah. to yep. the crowd. And cinnamon buns. Yes. And they were free. Yeah. So you're just performing for a crowd and you're like, this is the Altia show. Yeah. So eccentric. In the history. It is. Yeah. And it was a weird room. It, was like, it looked like uh, that bar from uh, Clockwork Orange. It was all white. Yeah. Like totally white. Everything's yeah. white seating. That everything. person beat me with a dildo that time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what happened to Pally? He was a character. I, I've seen him on the street a couple of times. Really? I, there were some great stories about him. I mean, he had, the, there was a quirky character we used to hang with, John Pally. I remember one time he was in a bar and he noticed the guy was pickpocketing people so he followed the guy out of the bar he goes hey can you come back here and the guy was like i didn't do anything and he goes i'm following you he chases the guy for like 10 blocks on the phone with the cops what wow. the cops get him just as the guy tries to get away into the subway what? and he got some sort of like badge of honor type thing really because he brought the guy in and all the guy, all the wallets were returned wow Whoa. badass Pauly. yeah and he, he's not an intimidating no. figure I mean, he, he looks like a be, fucking flamingo yes <laughs> he might be the least intimidating for, yeah. so friendly though but I remember that yeah. show he would just like he was barking but he'd like a girl would walk by and he'd like walk down the block and then like turn, they'd turn around and come back in he'd he, pick her up yes yeah. he yeah. had that skill he was so uh, agree what's fearless. the word I guess fearless but he was like warm non threatening. That's the one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, look at that. What's what is this? this? Is that buns and puns? How the hell did I get on there? Wow. Jonathan Pally. There he is in the top left. Where is he? Oh, oh yeah. Look there at that, Tim. Yes. <laughs> I haven't seen that in years. It was funny because you guys talk about the show having eight people. That was the highlight of my month doing that show. I know, but I did so many bad it was gigs. Hit or miss. There were some times when it was like, 150 people yes. in a tiny room and sometimes when it was like 12 people but yeah, yeah. I mean that yeah, was it was my favorite show. and he would put us on like whenever we wanted he spoiled all of us he oh, was so yeah. lucky for that so uh, lucky I see Vecchio on there every now and then that was a Nick Vatterot would go on there that was fun different yeah, was, time we were we were scrounging for I, shows I always think it's crazy like we take for granted I particularly take it for granted because I grew up in the city but like you know you came from another country you're from Canada from Oshawa yeah. originally yeah and you grew up later in life in Vancouver yeah and then you move I mean across you, another country it was uh yeah and I had done like I remember 
This is, and then I started all over. I'd done comedy maybe eight years. I I had done uh, the Craig Ferguson show, which like felt like a credit. I was like a boy in New York. No one gave a shit because I didn't get it from New York. Ah, interesting. I remember when I, uh, someone vouched for me. I showed up. It was an open mic at Three of Cups. There yep. was like five people in the crowd. I just moved. I was, I couldn't, I hadn't lived here. I was staying in here. I'd rent like an Airbnb for three weeks and just try to like meet people and mm-hmm. do shows. And I showed up this five, this terrible open mic. Everyone's bombing. And I go to the dude that's booking it. Uh, RG. RG Daniels. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And I go to him. I'm like, yeah, uh, you know, so-and-so wrecked me. He said I could do a spot. He goes, yeah, send me a tape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, this city's going to be fucking brutal. <laughs> brutal. But yeah, tape. to immigrate. You're the only one that, Sammy, you're the only one that recognizes that. I had to get like th- two work two work visas and a green card. Wow. Yeah, How, was, how's that process for the folks uh, who live here? I mean, it's here. brutal. I mean, I'm dyslexic, so any forms. It's like this uh, many forms. Yeah. And uh, yeah, my mom would help me. But uh, yeah, it's shit. It was probably, in total, probably 25000 bucks to get the three things. And as a struggling yeah. comic, $25,000. Yeah, it was. $25, yeah, it was uh, get out of here. Yeah, totally. Yeah, it was rough. And then it took so long, but now obviously I'm so glad I did it. But God damn, it was a pain in the ass. But the dream was always like you never f- flirted with L.A. No, didn't cr- no, because I watched right before I started. I watched comedian, and Seinfeld was doing the cellar and hanging out in New York, and I was just like, oh, fu-, like that just seemed like the thing to do. Yeah, that's the way to go. L.A. would have been better because it's so close to my family. But uh, mm-hmm. no, I wanted to be yeah, just New York seemed like the place to be. Yeah, you chose yeah. New York over your family. Huh? <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> totally. well, you want to be a good comedian. New York, yeah. It, you're such a New York comic. I mean, it's like, you know, your shit's so tight. And uh, I remember that Ferguson set. You have one of my all-time favorite jokes in that set because you say uh, – I quote this joke all the time, but you say, you know, when you, you meet the right person, you know right oh, away. Oh, yeah. How can you meet the wrong person? It takes a year and a half. Oh, right, yeah. That's, that's a, a great fucking, joke. That's one of the shortest, most perfect jokes. And that's such a, that's a novel in that joke, because you just picture all the bad relationships. Yeah, that's, that's yeah great. I did a lot of research to come up with that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny. I remember that was one of the first, that was like probably the first good joke I ever wrote. I had that, and I had a twin, a joke about I was dating a twin at the time. And I wrote them that afternoon, and that's comedy where it's like, <laughs> then four years later, you write another one. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, I remember they both came out the same afternoon. And I was like, this is it. This is going to be a piece of cake. And right. then you're just like, you know. You write one of those and you're like, cool, I need 75 more. <laughs> that's for yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. And then you're kind of scrounging and you're like, milk. What's funny about milk? You yeah. know, you're trying to write a joke and there's nothing yeah. coming. That's what we first bonded about because I, we both would like try to write every day. And I remember you talking about you still like pace on your roof. Yes. That was my big move. Yeah. Because I couldn't write. I can't write at Starbucks. These guys who sit down at Starbucks, and I, no. that's crazy to me. Yeah. I'm like, I would just look at everybody Absolutely. or check my phone. So I need to pace. So I don't look at the phone. You got the TV off. But then my, I live with my girlfriend. So I couldn't write jokes in front of her with a hairbrush going, Uber, huh? You know, <laughs> yeah, I have to yeah. talk out loud. So I'd have to go on the roof for privacy. Girlfriends suck. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I'd like to fuck other people. Uh, she hated that bit. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> <You're> like, yeah. <laughs> you don't like that premise, babe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then sometimes I'd be on the roof and there's some other guy on the roof like, what's he doing over yeah, there? Yeah. crazy guy talking yeah, to himself. to jump off. Yeah. So that, that was tough. You had to make it work back then. You had to figure it out. I was yeah, a janitor harder, and I would write in the boiler room. That's incredible. Because yeah. I didn't know where else to go. That's that's incredible. You never had a job here. No, I've never had a job. Ever, ever? No. I uh, Yeah, I had a job for a couple weeks in in high school and then I worked in a, like a couple bars briefly. Bartend? Uh, yeah, I was a terrible bartender. I was a bartender in England in a gay bar. What the yes. fuck? What are you, a spy? Where'd this come <laughs> yeah, from? I bartender was. in England? Yeah. Well, you were a model. That's a job. Yeah, that's oh, a job. Right, yeah, that, right. but it's like, yeah. So, no, I did have I did have uh, jobs. I was bartender in, in England, and I got hired because I was a model. It was a gay bar. Ah. And they made me, like, head bartender, and I'd never bartended before. This is your, sh- your sitcom, by the way. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Come Mo- on. Model, gay bartender? Yeah. The modeling I- thing didn't work out they're like kid we got one last stop for you <laughs> yeah. uh, gay gay bar. Bar. Yeah. uh no it was when i first moved to england before like i was just started modeling and i worked in this gay bar i was head bartender uh, in the main bar and it was such a mess it was brutal yeah yeah, yeah. boy Hello? george would come in who boy george oh wow yeah. so it was a gay bar yeah 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 oh okay yeah. Oh, man yeah 
Boy, George, can't yeah. go wrong there. No. Well, he... do you really want to hurt me? <laughs> <laughs> was that was that a fun gig? Uh, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, well, it was fun. It was just wild. I was. I was like twenty or something like that. Oh was yeah. Like, yeah, it was like. The, the food service, whatever industry, is bananas. I mean, it's just blow and hook up. Especially, and... like, gay, like, the gay oh. scene in England at that time. Like, I thought, I'm from, like, a, like basically, like, a mini Detroit, and mm. people fucking party hard. Yeah. We partied hard. But then that, like, England is just, like, next level. I don't know if they still party like that, but, like, yeah. How about the modeling? Uh Yeah, modeling. Yeah, they, that's a... Like, that's how did a, that start? Like, how did you just get into that? Well... I had a friend who she was like successful and I came, she lived in New York. She moved out of Oshawa when she was like 16. She was like, you know, very successful. And then she lived in New York and I came to visit her and all my friends are going to college. I'm dyslexic and was in special. I couldn't go to college. Mm. And she was just like brainstorming what I was going to do with my life. Cause the options weren't very, there wasn't a lot of options in Oshawa. I, I applied to work in the convenience store across the street from my high school, Damn. which would have been fucking depressing. Like a Seven Eleven. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was called One Stop, but, uh, uh yeah, it was, could you, all the teachers who said you wouldn't oh, amount to anything would be there buying right. a sandwich and a Coke. Like, nailed yeah, it. yeah, being like, uh. yeah, I still got it. <laughs> and, uh, so like my parents were like tripped out that I was going to get like stuck in Oshawa and yeah, then I, funny that you're basically a writer like you're you're dyslexic but ah, i mean you're, you're writing a book yeah i sold you're, a book you, you sold a book you're writing comedy you you write your own act i mean you're di a dyslexic writer it's, it's so cool. it's so yeah everything i've done has always been the biggest pain in the ass you could fucking possibly do including moving to new york like it was like right. such a fucking pain but it's because as of the first day of grade one if you can't read or write it's difficult yeah you know so i was like whatever but um yeah england was fun uh tons of the people did tons of drugs but i i did drugs in high school so by the time i got to england i was like kind of over it well you you were an acid guy i took some acid yeah <laughs> <laughs> we could tell by the shirt yeah. obviously I, did, I took yeah but the, you know what i took yeah. a lot of there okay so there's a great oh this here's a rec I'm, i have so many recommendations Please. here's a rec the other one on uh netflix it's a documentary about uh bob weir the rhythm guitar player for the grateful uh, dead yeah. but he's talking about the grateful dead would do acid every saturday afternoon damn that's and i was lot. watching it and i was like i used to do it every friday and saturday like i did it twice Whoa, as much as the dead as the dead yes jesus man <laughs> but i always That's felt like there and i fucked more than will chamberlain <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I heard I, <laughs> is that is that sounds very unhealthy it, yeah you would think it wasn't uh, it, i think and i don't recommend lsd for people because it doesn't agree with everyone some people take it sure. and they're just tripped out forever for some reason it agreed with me and yeah, you would do one on Friday and then I would double it on Saturday. Wow. And uh You did you even have time to come down? You'd come down a little bit. I'd come I would brutal. I wouldn't sleep all night because you're up all night and then my dad would want me to cut the grass. Like, sure. Yeah. But um the book cutting the grass it's pink and <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah, you're, you're pushing like, this unicorn. Yeah, like, my dad's like, why is it paisley? <laughs> uh, but um but sorry, what was that? Uh, oh, and then you Saturday, you doubled uh, down. Oh, yeah, double like, down. He's like, LSD and acid really agreed with me. <laughs> yeah, Wait, what was, what was that? that? Uh, Jane, uh, why, where's uh, Sam? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but what I was going to say is I felt really, like, dirty because I took drugs in high school and I all my friends were older and uh, I felt like dirty for taking so much acid because it was like it was like a full pot at the time and then I saw a therapist one that we're all very familiar with sure and I told him <laughs> and he up. goes you took acid because you were in special ed you were super frustrated with school oh, you felt yeah. completely under misunderstood sure. and you needed a break from reality and then Whoa. like this I was like yeah I had like it's the same as when you have a shitty day and you're like, I want to drink. I had such a shitty day. I just needed, you know, something a little stronger than a drink. Right, right. I love the idea of Phil off. being like 13 years old, just hanging out with a bunch of like 40 year old bearded dudes. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I, I hang with an older crowd. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like special bikers. Ed. Yeah. 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 Hangs with the Hells Angels. That makes total sense why you would do that. You were, yeah. you, were you needed an escape and you found one. Absolutely. And then I, and then so I finished high school and moved to England and started modeling and stuff and then drugs were very plentiful mm. you know so what I mean your friend got you into modeling the yes York, the friend from Oshawa who yep. moved to New York yep she got you into she, and she's a successful yeah model. she was successful she lived in New York and stuff like that and at the time New York 
the guys that were like models were like all American guys that actually looked like models. And I had super skinny and I was long hair. And that was Can we kinda... get a picture of Phil? Oh, please. Do have, do we have pictures there's of that? one. There's one. If you go on my Instagram. Oh, boy. Very exciting. Uh, you were a big cardigan guy for a minute. I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, but, um, yeah, so then by the time, and if you're like a straight young dude working at a gay bar, the drug options are very oh, plentiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I was yeah. kind of over it by then. Okay, a lot of clips. You're in for a treat, Matt. Oh, man. Do you follow me, Matt? Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Uh, oh. Now he does. You want to go down. <laughs> you want to go way down. This is like old school. Uh-oh. Oh, dang. That's a good barkeep right there. Yeah. Keep it's going. way down. Sorry. Damn, dude. There Wait, there you go. go. Back, 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 back. I saw. Oh, yeah. my oh God. is that Jared Leto? Holy <laughs> shit! The, the, there's a bit. That photo's altered because it's a it's a bit. Jesus. Uh -huh. But that's without the mouth moving. You can look at that straight, straight Damn. black. I like hair. it better with the lips moving. <laughs> wow, He's got a pretty mouth, boy. <laughs> yeah, he does. Holy hell! Holy shit! This yeah. is wild. Look yeah. at that. Look, look at, at that hair, dude. That Holy was shit. my first fashion show. That was the first oh big, that was in God. Milan. That was my first like fashion show. So when did you come out as a straight guy? <laughs> <laughs> dad, sit down. <laughs> it's not what you think. Maybe it's dad, stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and leave. <laughs> Holy hell. But yeah, great jawline, good eyes. I got a comedy special in Canada way, way too early. Yeah. They do that over there. Oh, they, yeah. They just, they, cause it's like funded by the government. They have to give a certain amount out. Holy shit, that's yeah. crazy to think of yeah. comedy funny by the government. Yeah. Yeah, it's Hold yeah. on, I want to see Hanley. Give me just a top me. That a baby. I got shows tonight. I got shows too. And we recorded another app. Phil, we're going to be fucked up here. You have another episode after this? No, no, no. no, we, no. we did one before you were here because uh, we're both on the road for a while. So we, we backlogged a couple of these bad boys. What and, were you uh, drinking in the previous one? Paper Planes. Oh, okay. I've Whiskey, never had one. app. I mean, dude, make him, just make him one just so we can have a sip. Just so he just so he knows what he's missing. I mean, it's, it, we, it's I feel like it's a hidden level. gem. Really? I think, it, I think it might be my favorite cocktail. You've Whoa. you've talked about them. I've just never. I had, mean, more okay. than an old fashioned. Uh, I'm never, old fashioned's like a classic. I like Manhattan's better than old fashioned's. I love a Negroni. I love a Martini. Paper planes in that category for me. It should really? be. It should be a classic. It's just yeah. not as simple as the other ingredients. I agree. Probably. It should be in the mix of like the staples. Really? Oh yeah, it's, it's that so good. good. I was at a bar the other night and they had it and I got fucking excited and it was like you're damn right I'm getting one. Oh god, when you want a drink and then you're at a bar, it's just the There's perfect. nothing better. When yeah. they ha when when you have an, a weird taste and they can deliver yes. on that shit. I was in Costa Rica last week. Yeah, and uh, the, we did a show and the guy who ran the show was like, I'm taking taking everybody out for a nice steak and the whole thing. So we go to this Costa Rican steakhouse. It was amazing. And I just got to, I said, you know what? Give me a dirty martini. And it was so fucking good. Uh, when you hit, the, you get the exact thing you want and it hits the spot. So good. And wanna, when someone does it right, it's like executed properly. Yes. Martinis, are, you really got to be careful because you don't realize how fucking strong they are. Yeah. Because they go down so booze. easy. Yeah. Dude, I, I went on a date and I had, I want to say like, you know, four or five. <laughs> Gee, but, that's a but, lot that's of vodka. A fucking, like, but yeah. they're serving them with a little side thing. Oh, yeah. So it's like you kill one. I'm like, oh, I have yeah. a little extra oh, pouch. Like a milkshake. So I probably had like eight. My, and I'm like, holy shit. I woke up that next morning puking my guts <laughs> out. One, one of my favorite quotes of uh, from my dad was when I was a teenager. And he must have, we were going to drink martinis. And he must have heard me planning it on the phone or whatever because I was like saying goodbye to him or whatever. And he put his arm around me. He goes, he's in my ear. He goes, martinis are murder. Huh. Yeah. Damn. And they were they were. They were fucking deadly. Someone kicked over the vodka and we were just drinking vermouth all night. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad hangover. Holy it's fun, shit. Dude, it's funny as hell to that like that's like your like dark so like like you're and you're planning a heist, like we murder him at noon. Like, yeah. We're gonna drink martinis. Your dad's like, Don't do it, son. Yeah. yeah that's Don't a good, do it. Good advice. It sounds I, like a noir film. Martinis are murder. <laughs> but they are, like they fuck you up. They fuck what was you that up? thing it's that Tom Papa so said quiet. about martinis, like one is not enough. He said it's like tits. Dude, yeah, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. One's weird. Two's too. Uh, three's too many, and two is perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I feel like that. I've heard that with just drinking in general. Mm. I don't know. I feel like four are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you like four tits? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's two women. It's two women. Threesome. I yeah. Think or, right. or or like fat a, guy. Another type of mammal. <laughs> <laughs> <A> manatee. Uh, <laughs> five 
Martinis on a date. You must have been rolling. I was on fucking en fuego for the moment. For, for the date, I was killing it. The next morning, I was just like, oh. yeah, that's the worst. Puking up nothing. That's the worst. Oh. When, you're like, when you're just like, I'm just here to puke, but nothing's coming out. And yeah. yeah, you're I was, a puker. I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for. Uh, for these pills I, I used to have this doctor that would just hook me up with like anti-nausea prescription pills and mm. I couldn't find them ah. so I'm like I'm like on all fours like pill ah. <laughs> I can't fucking yeah. find these pills wow. I had to just tough it out I was able to fall back I also have to sleep a certain way because my neck is still fucked up so I'm like I can't sleep on my side I have to kind of fall asleep on my back ah. Yeah. so I'm like it's oh, hard for me to fall you're gonna die Hemi, Hemi, Jimi Hendrix style yeah That's right terrible puke in your own mouth and- yeah yeah. Suffocate. <laughs> Look at him go, dude. That's oh, a good, yeah. good mix. Just a That's smidge. A I just want a smidge. Just give him a taste, dude. Peters, just rub some on it? your gums, dude. <laughs> you want the rest, Peters? Oh, shit. Oh, he's an alcoholic. <laughs> Tell me this isn't a fucking dope-ass cocktail, the paper plane. All right. I like the glass. Is that a traditional paper plane glass? Usually you want it either in like a smaller coupe glass, but we just used all those. Uh-huh. and uh, Or you can do what's called like a Nick and Nora glass, which is like... One of those small. Is, that, is it Nick and Nora Charles? What's up? From the Thin Man? I guess so. I'm not sure oh. where the. Whoa. Yeah, I'm not sure. But it's basically, it's like this. It's like a, but a little smaller. Like a very uh, small. Like a flute. Like, almost, but it's like a short, stout flute. Got like a dwarf it. flute. Like a chode. Yeah. Is like that a where chode it comes flute. from or yes. what? There you go. I love the little, is that a paper airplane? On the side? Oh, wow. Nice touch. The de- devil's in the details. Yeah, I nailed it. Look at that. Nick and Nora. Detective that's couple. Nick and Nora. Tra- one of the, uh, that's a good wreck if you haven't read it. The Thin Man, a married couple. You know, he's a retired detective. They married. Uh, he married her. So now he's like this badass retired detective who's just written. Norman and I always say, like, you want to make a movie cool or a book cool? Just make the character rich. Because you can do anything. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. So the character. Batman. Yeah, Batman. So he's just a rich, cool badass, and they solve mysteries together and get fucking wasted. Ah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a fun, they're fun. I mean, it's uh, by Dashiell Hammond, who is a Pinkerton, who was an actual oh, wow. detective. Really? Who wrote it. Yeah, badass. And big inspo for Raymond Chandler. If you like, ah. if you like murder mysteries that are that are fun books. That uh, And the movies, Thin Man movies are great, too. Yeah, dude. That drink is insane. You like it? I do like it, yeah. Paper Plane. We're trying to bring it back. I'm, yeah. I'll order one when I'm out. Oh, yeah. You'll look cool. You'll look like you know your stuff. Love a paper Yeah, they're getting really popular, too, so. Oh, yeah? Jeez. Well, oh, I think we might have something to do with it, hopefully. I might be drunk. We're bringing it back. Bringing yeah. it back, just like in, where's that, Clerks 2? Uh, I, I got a wreck that. for you guys. Clerks 2. And, and Ari Shafir already made this wreck on our podcast, but I'm, I'm going to double wreck it. Everything, everywhere, all at once. The movie. I gotta see oh, it. Oh, I gotta see it. We're the only people yeah. who have seen it's it. It's just yeah. visually, and I've never seen a movie. Have you seen him, Peters? It's okay. Just, visually, it's like unlike anything you'll ever see. I've never heard one bad review about no. this movie. Not one. It's a little. The one thing I will say, it's a little long for for what it is, because it's just like fast paced, like bam, 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 for like two hours, twelve minutes. But uh-huh. it's it's gorgeous. It looks. I would say if anyone ever seen like Kung Fu Hustle, like the Stephen Chow movies, like yeah. very in the same He's vein. Amazing. Okay, like, okay. Ninety five. It's, it's a comedy. It's weird as hell. It's She's, a comedy. Yeah, but it's like a heartfelt comedy. It's the kid from Goonies, yeah. uh, grown up. Data. Data. Really? And a yeah. short round also from also, Indiana Jones. Um, That's right. Michelle. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis. Thank you. Yeah. Jenny Slate. Great. That was a, one of my early comedy crushes. Was she? Do you remember oh, yeah. that show she used to do in Brooklyn? Terrific. Where they would line up out the fucking yes, door. Yes, yes. That show was hot with the dangling, the white yeah. tampon strings or yeah. whatever those were. Yeah, yeah, that was a hot show. I saw Chris Rock there once. Really? Yeah, yeah. How was that? I saw Zach Galifianakis there before. Really? Yeah. Well, he was there with Aziz. I think he was watching Aziz do something, and then they were like, you got to go on. He was like, fuck it, I'll go on. And then yeah. he tried a bunch of shit that scared the hell out of him, and he left. Because <laughs> that crowd was a little uh, oh, they precious. Were soft. Little precious. Yeah. Soft, yeah. exactly. He's too good for them. Now, let me ask you this there, Acid. You yes, like the acid. I am ai don't touch acid. I did it in college. It was too intense. I go yeah. all shroom. Oh. Where you at on the, the mush? I like, uh, I, I mean, I don't do hallucinogenics anymore, but, uh, uh, like, I mean, I would be open to down the road someday. But, I yeah, for me, we just couldn't get the mushrooms like i remember like thinking as a teenager like oh mushrooms like it seems so exotic and cool mm-hmm. um so we rarely had them but it's a similar feeling i feel like 
Uh, I feel like acid is liquor and mushrooms are beer. Yes, you know. I was gonna say that tamer. acid is a sh- is like mushrooms is like a dull saber and uh-huh. acid's like a sharp one. Yeah, well, to me, acid was just like, whoa, holy shit, my brain is exploding. I, I'm seeing and thinking too much. Where mushrooms are like, yeah, hey, I'm laughing, I'm giggling. They're so similar, though. They are very similar. Same vein. You don't microdose ever. You don't do that. Uh, stuff? I did uh, briefly during the pandemic, but I don't really do it anymore. What What brought that on? Just your uh, like, what the just fuck? sheer boredom. Yeah. Uh, I remember I was going. I remember I was microdosing. I was going through. I was going through a, a breakup, and I was like super bummed. And then I saw we were hanging out or something like that. You go, like, you seem like so much better today. And in my head, I was like, yeah, because I'm flying on acid. Ah, really? Wow. Yeah. Can you function? Uh, yeah. I just took. I shouldn't say I was flying, but I was a little like I like microdose times two type wow. thing. Wow. But I did feel better during the breakup. Damn. But yeah, I don't. I don't know. Now I'm just like whatever. I'll have a coffee. I had a friend in high school. That's the f- most I grew up sentence of all time. <laughs> I used to do acid. I'm like, now just I'll have coffee. All right. <laughs> yeah. Coffee's acid, right? yeah, that's. Uh, I had a that's friend funny. in high school. Still to the dead. I used to trip balls. Now I do Nespresso. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great commercial for Nespresso. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, take it easy, Beer Jew. Thank you, Beer Thank Jew. You. You oh, thanks, it. man. Thank you, brother. He Thank swoops you. in, he swoops out. He's it's like a drunk Batman. <laughs> so uh, I had a friend in high school. He got into a fist fight. He was kind of a nerdy guy. He got beat up, whatever. We were hanging out like a month later. He's on acid. He's flying. He's, he's through the roof on acid. Eyeballs huge, chugging booze, being crazy, climbing up trees and shit. We see the same guy who beat him up. He was like a jock. He was like a tough guy. And he goes right up to him, beats the shit out of him. No way. Because he was on acid. He was juiced up. He had no fear. Whoa. And just the intimidation. He had the crazy eyes. And he was like a foot short on this guy. He was like a football guy. And my friend was like this, you know, nerdy skateboard dude, kind of <laughs> scruffy. And he beat the fuck out of him. This is wow. like a dude drugs ad. I yeah. know. He just walks up to him with a skateboard like a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're like, dude, don't do it. He, he fucked you up so bad. Like, he, he, I remember he punched him and he uh pierced his lip through the the tooth like the oh, tooth came through yeah, his but once that should happen to you you're probably fearless i guess once you get your ass kicked like that you're just like we we grew up in similar situations because you talk about seeing people get the shit kicked out of them and so I, much I, I saw it too yeah they would just be like they would look like they had that disease that the elephant man had afterwards their oh, face yeah. would be all swollen they'd have like like it looked like half of a tennis ball knot. Like, yes. It was so brutal. Brutal. I saw guys get kicked in the face when they were down, you know, with a Doc Martin just boom to yeah. the face, like a soccer kick. You're it was like, horrific. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't know oh what that God, was. That yeah. was oh, that's horrible. Yeah, Damn. that's bad. Yeah, yeah. It's a great ad for Wilson, though. <laughs> Wilson, the tennis ball. Tennis oh. balls, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, yeah, dude. I mean, that's the, getting the shit kicked out of you like that. I, I knew I had a friend like that who would do that, and he really just, he in was, see New York. He was fearless. He yeah. was like one of those dudes who didn't look tough, but every time he fought, it was like game over. It was I like know. He, they're like something he, something possessed him. Yes, in that moment, he was the most gentle guy. He beat me up once. We were both drunk, and I made the mistake mouthing off to him. <laughs> and, that's hilarious. And he just took my face. I think I swung at him and missed. He took my face and just smashed it on the fucking floor. Oh. Bloody nose everywhere. Fuck. And he just fucking, and that was kind of it. I mean, it was like, he just kind of kicked me a couple of times. I was like, I'm done. Yeah. Oh my and then God. When he got in it with other guys, that's when it was like, he sent one guy to the fucking ER. Yeah. And he didn't know what the, you know, just fucking. I get a fun. Looked, and he didn't look like he can fight. Those are the scariest yeah, of dudes. Course, can, of but course. it's such an athletic thing. The coordination and the like, it's insane. I and know, but not back then scared. it was, it was an, it's adrenaline. Like, it was just like, ah! It was like, what? It was more like, what's going on at home? Yeah, but, it, it is than, quite than revealing. Athletic. Yeah. yeah. There's just so much anger. Maybe the dad hit you, or you had a death in the family, or you're gay, or there's something in you that's just like, ah, I've been holding this in. I'm angry. Yeah. I grew up with a guy who would take in, he was like the toughest guy in uh, Oshawa. And you could even, you could. That someone, sounds like an insult. If you, <laughs> oh, he's the toughest guy in Oshawa. <laughs> if you wanted to, you could, you, he didn't even have to, he was so tough. He had such a reputation that you didn't even need, he didn't even need to be there. You could just remind someone oh, you were friends with hilarious. him. And they would, they would leave you alone. Right, right. It's like yeah. a fable. Yeah. And, but 
but he was an, he was like a fucking athlete. He was a great hockey player. Oh, he had geez. studied Taekwondo. Oh, jeez. Yeah, and right, so he was he was graceful and a badass. Dude, it was crazy. He would do like round like it was like karate kid shit yeah. in a street fight. He would do like roundhouses and wild Crazy. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen the new Karate Kid on Netflix, Cobra Kai? I loved it. I watched the whole thing. It's in like, like two dude, days. it's it's so dumb. It's so. I mean, it's fun. But have you seen it, Phil? I saw the first season. Or it's part like, of the first season. It's a kid show. I, it's a kid show. Yeah, but I I tried to watch the newest season, and it's just like all these arcs of like kids like flirting, and they're like they're in like eighth grade, and they're like tech. I'm like I can't watch this shit. What am yes. I a fucking pedo? Yeah. And yeah. then and then the, I love how the whole arc of that show is like. Uh, to like remember what happened in ninth grade. I'm like, no fifty year old talks about this. <laughs> yeah, 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 no yeah. fifty year old is this hung up on a karate tournament. Right. That is like it's part of the fun. <laughs> That's, That's funny. Part of it. William Zabka is incredible. He's the guy who plays Johnny Lawrence kills it. Who is the that blonde the blonde guy? guy? He's yeah, incredible. It's such a bummer. Some uh, it's it's the acting's like that where he just. He didn't have a. He just nailed it so hard in the original Karate Kid. Then he didn't do anything since then, right? He had a well, couple bully movies. Back to school, back. He guy. was typecasted. Oh right, yeah, because he was the bully. He was the blonde bully but in eighties. God movies. damn, he's a good actor. But he's he also great. was so good at being like the vulnerable guy. Like this is a three dimensional character. Like it's funny how that character is so. Uh, likable and Ralph Macchio's character, you're like, fuck this hand job. Uh, this yeah. guy, you're like, you got a hot wife, you got a big thriving business, <laughs> yeah, and you're just fucking with this dude who lives in like a Motel Six. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck you. That's true. oh yeah, he's worked. Look at that. He's you know he, the he same. Oh really? Maybe I'm wrong. Did Isn't but do you remember? What don't you feel like there was like 20 years where you didn't see him in anything? Oh definitely. You know the same guy who wrote. Uh, Cobra Kai wrote Harold hey, and Kumar. He worked a lot. Harold and Kumar is great. Really? Great. Bombed at the theater. Yeah. No. And then it, it bombed? It bombed. Really? And it was like a huge thing where everybody's like, okay, we'll make it. It was a big stretch to make it. Like Everybody's like, we'll take a shot on this fucking weird movie. That's a great comedy. And it's great, but it killed in DVDs. Raunchy. I think that's what happened with Austin Powers, too. I think it killed really? him. Really? Yeah, rentals. Yeah. I don't know. I think that was, in the, that was pretty theater big. We might both big. be full of shit here. I don't know. Harold and Kumar... Uh, Big Lebowski was like that, for sure. Lebowski. God, he worked a ton. I just didn't see any of these movies. Well, first of all, I don't know if any of these are getting out there. Some of these might be direct-to-video, let's be honest. Let's scroll he, over. Let's see some of these. He got like, uh, nominated for an, uh, an Oscar for writing a short film. Really? Yeah, that's what it said in the... Oh, wow. Over here. All right. That's a great moment in in uh, a yeah. comedian when Orny Adams yes, yes. when Orny Adams goes Stephen Wright what has he done lately <laughs> he, won he just got nominated for an Oscar oh he won oh he won an he Oscar he won an Oscar yeah. and he goes what else yeah, what, <laughs> what, do you mean, yeah. what else yeah talk to me when he's got an Emmy <laughs> did you hear Orny on what the fuck I listened no, to uh, Sam was listening to you the other night it's a wild one really is well, it? well he well, just, just reveals tension, a lot the tension is so real between them too. yeah Mark Maron I love him but god damn is he like if he if he's he, a pill He's easier to. He was nicer to us. I feel like Marcus. We're like of a different generation. Yeah, but we if don't you threaten came up him with him. Yep. Holy shit. Oh yeah, he comes hard at you. What? Uh, he's just like, oh, yeah, I never liked you. Well, yeah, tell me why? And you're like, he'll open with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Goddamn, he's such a great interviewer. He's good. He might be the best. He's yeah, really he's good. like, you know, he's incredible. And those, I want Marin on this pod, dude. Oh, I'd love to have him on. I he would trash us. He would trash us, and we and we do something. We'll get like Jew food for him. We won't Ooh, do. We that's won't good. Drink. That's what we did with. You guys Burr. are chewing Nicorette. <laughs> yeah. We did with Burr. We did root beer floats. We put alcohol in ours. We didn't, you know. But yeah. like, we won't do alcohol. If you don't want to drink, you don't have to drink on I, here. I can see him sitting there going like, "So you guys have to drink to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. You need alcohol to be funny. Oh, I got it. Okay. Oh, you guys drink. You're like bros. You're alpha. I got it. All right, thanks, Mark. Yeah, good. Thanks for coming. We're not on. alpha at all. I would no. have been. Were you guys nervous before doing WTF? I'd, oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah I'd be thinking too. about it the day before. I think. Mm -hmm. But it was also I did it like at the height of like the very beginning of COVID, where they're like, "You're gonna do it in person." I'm like, "Yeah, it's Marin. I'll do it in person." But like, yeah. but it was one of those things where I was like. uh the world's fucking over anyway. I, yeah. was, I was at that point. I was like, but I, yeah, I was. I respect him a lot. I grew up respecting Marilyn. Yeah, like his album. Same. I listened to his albums as a kid. You know. Yeah. Fuck. And Obama sat in that chair. Exactly. And you go in, and he makes you at ease because you you go in his house, and he's like, ah, my cat shit on the carpet, and you're like, oh, okay, and he's in shorts and sandals, and so it it really comes down a peg. It's not so intimidating. And yeah. he's making a tuna fish sandwich. He's like, oh, we're recording five minutes. Let me take a shit, and he makes a. <laughs> 
coffee. So it was actually kind of loose. Yeah. But the shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took a loose shit. It fucking helped a lot. <laughs> I was like, dude, that's a loose turd. He's like, fucking. Do you ever, Do you ever go to L.A.? I feel like you're not. You don't make that trek. No, I don't make that trek. You got to make that trip. I every should. Once in a while. I when yeah. Now that the special's out, you can yeah. make that trip. Anything that is hap- Anything I've ever. D- I, Sam gives me the advice, and if I do it, it hel- it is like a game changer. So yeah, I'll go to L.A. Yeah, do the I mean, rounds. Don't go a ton, but like go enough just to get on the on the pods. And I had bullshit. a CD or like I recorded an album. wasn't going to put it out. wasn't happy with it. Sam listened to it. He's like, put it out, and just like it changed everything. I was able to like not have roommates. Nah, there you go. One hundred percent thanks to Sam. Why wouldn't you put it out? You just didn't, I don't know. You I was like, yeah, I didn't like. I was like, less destructive fucks. Comics. I guess. Well, yeah. All, I was like, all... I don't like my cadence. Like it was like, I don't know. It was weird. I just didn't. I wasn't happy with it. But it like no it's one's played, happy with their shit. I guess. And also, you you started doing clips, which took a minute. A one hundred percent. Sam is like, well, you're so good at crowd work. Like Phil is one of the best crowd work. Yes, comics. and that's I mean, he's a great joke writer too. But he really is like, it is. Some people, they're doing crowd work, and you're like, whatever. Phil is genuinely... There's people like, you know, Todd Barry, Phil. Like, there's certain people you, like, enjoy watching yeah. do crowd work, you know? Well, thank you. Phil's so fucking good at it. He does his own style where he kind of negs the yes, audience. Yes. It's like, it's a unique way to go into it. Oh, yeah, for sure. But he, Sam had been telling me for years, just post crowd work clips. Because no one does it like him. And I never did. And I just didn't do it. And then I've started. I started posting clips like every other day. And yeah. it like it's made a, world a huge of difference. difference. Yeah. yeah. This is like in the last it. month. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It, it's took, just, it took 10 years. But it's just such a different Clearly business. Phil values my advice a lot. He's no, like, I, I did it, I did it uh, 14 <laughs> days ago. <laughs> yeah. not to help. No, he gives great advice. Yeah. Well, it's just a different game. Like we thought, oh, I'll be funny. I'll write jokes. I'll yeah. get crowds to laugh at me. But that's like a drop in the bucket now. Being now funny is like 7% of it's it. It's so, I know. I and, mean, not really. It's like 80%. But you know what I mean. It's like fucking. It's, yeah, it's you got to do all the other shit, and I just hated doing I hate the it. other stuff. I hate it. I pay people to do it. It's such a pain in the ass. You did you, you pay people to cut the clips though? Because I don't trust. It. How do you trust that they would? Well, cut they it? they go, hey, is this good? And they send it to me, and I go, I ah, put that joke back in, take that one out, whatever, oh, okay. and then they recut it. But yeah, it's a little scary. But at this point, I'm just like, put it up. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. You start to lose faith after a while because it's so much work. It's so much work. You it can't takes live so a normal long. life. You you need to stay relatable as a comic, and you need to like do shit. You need to live a life. And mm. when you get this caught up on like phones and social media and stuff, you're not going out and doing things. No. And being a person and being a person is part of what makes the material relatable. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Because like in New York, if being it's not a normal activity to do a spot at the cellar, then hang with comedians for two hours, then you know, go home, watch two hours worth of TV and go to bed at four, get up at noon. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? That's a, it's a great life. Oh, yeah. It's That's what, all I, I want. You're telling me. That's yeah. all I do. <laughs> but, you know, now we were talking about recently, like, clips are so important now that I'll have an opener who's, like, okay at comedy, but he's like, oh, I'll cut clips. I'll film the whole weekend. I'm like, you're in. Oh, God, yeah. And that's how it is now. No, yeah. Also, the people that do the clips and the t- subtitling, they are fucking, they just disappear into the night. <laughs> that is, like, the ultimate vagabond. You have someone, you're like, this is great. Yeah, And yeah. then, like, three weeks later, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know. Right. I don't <laughs> shine <laughs> shoes no more. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You get a postcard from, like, India from the dude. <laughs> this dude's a now you're like yeah. that guy yeah, yeah. holy shit <laughs> but these young Fuck. comics now they know how to edit i'm like how do you know how to edit they're like i learned it man i'm freaking out i don't know what to do to make it in this business so they know final cut pro and avid they take all these classes yeah. it's a smart thing to do if you're like if you want a little side gig as a comic it's it's you know mm-hmm. you get extra work you will you know it used to just be having a license you'd get opening work a driver's i know license. Yeah. that was the car the clips of the new car yeah clips are the new car Good Damn, point. yeah, you're right. Having a car back in the day. It was huge. That was the, what they say? Car was the beginning of career. Car. Yeah. That was some quote Damn. somebody told me when <laughs> yeah. I started. Yeah. You can see why I didn't catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Not my quote. <laughs> but yeah. But it's dude, just, I mean, I'm pumped for you. You know, this special I think is really going to pop I off. I think so, it's such too. such a good special and it's like. Oh, thanks. And it's like, you know, 
jokes. It's jokes. Yeah, it's jokes. Hard jokes. You film with the seller. Killed Shout it. out Liz. We love you, Liz. Yeah, Liz is the, the best. The manager, the seller, the comedy seller, the best uh, club in the world. I'm hot and cold on her. But uh, <laughs> no, we love We're gonna you, We're going to clip that part out. Uh, and send I, it to her. I, it's like Liz manages the seller, and then she also like somewhat manages my life. She's another. Really? Oh, God. She helps me with so much shit. It's crazy. I'll see. We live in the same neighborhood, me and Liz, and I'll see her walking a dog. And I'm like, what are you up to? And she's like, I got to walk the dog. Then I'm going to turn the, the lights on at the cellar. The kitchen is fighting with each other. And then I'm going to go feed Michelle Wolf's cats. And then I got eight shows tonight. I'm it's, like, who are you? It's so crazy. I mean, you see her working like tonight at like 2 a.m. She'll be at a table like da, 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 da. with an I Aperol know. spritz and a glass. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the Dude, best part is that like she took a three day vacation, which she never takes. Well, good yeah. for her. And I swear to God. I had just given her shit. I was like, three days off? Like, I, you know, I, <laughs> I was teasing her. Someone walked up to her like, where have you been? And she was like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine never break. taking even one day a week off and you take a three-day vacation for the first time all year and everyone's like, where were you? Like, that's your yeah. impact. Yeah. That's a hard life. I'm sure that's she was getting impact. texts on the oh, beach and she, shit, too. 24 hours a day, she gets texts. She manages all the shows. How many shows are at the cellar a week? Like, 80 yeah. or something like that? She manages all the shows. All the comics. Yep. Which, you know. We're then, all a mess. Yes. Then all the staff, all the barbacks, all the fucking sound do people. Right. The waiters, know? the bouncers. Yes. And yes. I'm sure Phil's and like, what the- is spin cycle? Which one do I put in? Is it colors and whites? And she's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> then, then uh, all the crowds. Right. It's insane. Right. How many people go in through the cellar a week? I saw her. I, I don't know if I should say this, but this is how badass Liz is. <laughs> Here we go. And we'll move on after yeah. this because uh, she's going to hate it. this. But although, also, you never see Liz go like, ah, I'm just uh, I'm overwhelmed. She no. just keeps it all in and yes. just keeps working. She's a fucking she, her, her phrase that she just is, it'll be fine. She always oh, says really? that. Yes. That's her mantra. That. She, her mantra is what she says to me all the time. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. She said that the pan- I was like, the pandemic, what are we going to do? Is comedy over? She's like, it'll be fine. And that was in like 2020. Two things she says to me. That's what they said in the 9-11 flight. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be fine. <laughs> Two things she says to me is, it'll be fine and Phil, no one cares. Uh, no one cares. It's yeah. kind of uh, profound. Yes. In a weird way. Like, hey, it's all meaningless anyway. So I got my your food fucking life. last night and I got home and I got it to go and I, it said, Phil, no one cares. Oh, the, that's the sweet. Yeah. She beautiful. needs a hug. She's yeah. the best. Somebody hug Liz for Christ's sake and give her a pounding. I, I think she one... needs a good railing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. God damn it, Mark. Uh, we uh, <laughs> we, we uh, were there one night and this woman was being really rude to her. To like, you know, the show was sold out. You have to get there at 8 30 for a 9 p.m. show everyone knows that you get there 30 minutes early to get yeah. seated and the person got there at like 9 10 and they're like you gave our seats away <laughs> and liz was like you know the rules is this i'm sorry she's being very nice to the yeah she's like, you just gave them away <laughs> yeah like b- non-stop just berating her and at a certain point i i couldn't stand as i went over i was like liz we just had like a couple <laughs> seats open up you should give it to them two seats just opened up and she looked at me like smiling yeah. and she goes the seats opened up i was like no they didn't you stink <laughs> and liz starts laughing hysterically <laughs> Oh, that's uh, good. I'm, just like, I'm just like, and Liz is like, the person walked away fuming, and Liz was like, I hate you so fucking much. Uh, but that was pretty funny. You, yeah, uh, the, your interactions with her are the best. The we Yelp reviews times. on the cellar are not pretty because it's the best club in the cut, but they don't, they're, there's no nonsense. They mean business. So like, yeah. you're late. They get rid of your seat. If you talk, well, they throw you out. They can't. So they, they yeah, go, that's when you're why the best, you can kind of get away with. I it. But that's so. why it's the best. They, exactly. Because they don't fuck around. If you show up drunk 20 minutes late for a show, some people are gonna, some clubs are gonna let you in because they want the ticket price. Sure, sure. Yeah. But you know that person's gonna suck. Exactly. You're 20 minutes late and you're bombed. And they don't you're hurting the product. Of, uh, groups in like you know that right. yeah you can't have more than what four or six people or something something, great something like, like that. that that's yeah. a great thing oh, oh I don't we waited, we waited an hour, an hour in line, line. no you didn't one star no, you, you didn't wait one an star. hour in line Shardelia <laughs> we're gonna name her Shardelia Patrick Murphy's in that <laughs> one star too I mean, they just keep. I knew they were bad. The beer was cold. What a fucking horrible thing. The comics, cold beer. Who likes cold the be- beer? Is, the, and the comics. The beer were was cold. The comics were amazing. Staff was very rude and quick to qu- yeah quiet you quick down. Quick to quiet you down, oh, Patrick. You noisy son of a bitch. Patrick, you're a dumb cunt. Comedy's a two-way street. One star again. I knew these reviews were bad. I never even looked at these. It is the best club exactly. on the planet. Is it the best club on the on Earth? It is, but that's why these reviews well, don't matter. Well, Guess yeah, what? If you don't like how you're treated, it's they're probably better to us. Yeah. Ooh. 
Ooh, good What's point. That? Good point. They're probably better to us. You're getting better comics. Yeah, you're, comics are great. It, it's the it's the best club, and it's all. I mean, the people. If someone gives them a red, red review, it's the same person that is told are to be quiet. Are these literally all one star? I'm telling you, man. If you haven't already, it's smooth. Oh, if you haven't heard already, it's smooth sex summer. The leading, the leader in below the belt grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving your pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. I love this thing. You gotta love the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. It's got it all. I use this thing on my sack. I go around the base of the shaft. You just want a little extra length. And uh, no better <laughs> equipment than these guys. Manscaped did it right. They got a goddamn headlight on the thing. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you can't nick. You can't cut. I mean, there's a lot of veins down there and yeah. a lot of uh, precious material you don't want to ruin. I just uh, use it, man. It's it's. I feel lighter. It's great. Yeah, it works. I, I mean, had a fucking fro covering my balls. <laughs> yeah. Big fan. Our, our pubes look like our hair, so uh, it's not that different. <laughs> and you need a real... I got sideburns, too. <laughs> you need a real mower down there. Yeah. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer features proprietary advanced skin-safe technology to perfect, protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof, so you can shave in the shower. Come on. Get it all out in one go. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and Shed Travel Bag. Take a look at the Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. Grooming kit. I keep one in my my bag all the time. This kit includes stainless steel nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. No more scratching your lady in bed with those feet. Get 20% off. And free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind with your hairy ball bag. I've seen them throw people out all day well, long. Because it's the same people that are like, we were only laughing. Exactly. You're like, fuck face, you were not only laughing. Yeah. I was <laughs> laughing. Yeah. There was puke on your shoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was puke <laughs> laughing. <laughs> uh, so one time I saw a giant comic on stage. I'm not going to say his name. Hugely successful big famous comic and he was hammered and he's up there like man i'll tell you another thing and one guy was in the crowd like what this sucks you know what what, what the hell's going on because it wasn't great I'll, I'll be honest and and the comic saw this guy doing that and he's like what's your problem and he was like oh, i'm just saying you, you're hammered this is weird and he's like you think you're better than me and it was it was ugly whoa and eventually they threw that guy out they threw the guy out in the crowd, and the guys in the in the wings like, "Why are you throwing me out? What did I do? This show sucks." It's and they like were like, "Squid Games, they just shoot him in the head." Yeah, like, you got to get out of here. And he's like, "Wait, what?" And they're like shimmying him yeah. out of there. He's like, "What the fuck did I do?" And I was talking to Liz. He's like, "He's got to go." Put it back the guy's taking his shit on stage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's, he's doing like, heroin. Someone else like this smells bad. They're like kill her too. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how much they love the comics that they're like, throw him out because we'd rather have this drunk celebrity on stage. And it was pretty. And you know awesome. it was the right move. Yeah, yeah. It was like Liz was a mob boss. She's like him. <laughs> Kill get, him. get rid of him. Kill she him. The cat. The cellar is the best club in the world, man. The best uh, club on the planet. The best. I have a show there every Tuesday at ten thirty. Thank you. I'm All going right. there after this. I'm, oh, I'm pumped. Hey. I'm pumped to drunkenly bomb some new material. Ooh, I got my spots not until like midnight. My agent just texted me. We're coming tonight. I'm like, great. I've had uh, five drinks. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it should go well. It's usually my crowd and their. Uh... Oh wait, you're here tonight. I'm doing the. Oh, uh, never mind. I'm doing a longer set with Will Sylvins will host. He'll do time. I'll do like thirty of new, and I don't have an hour yet, so I'll just bring him back up and we'll fuck around. For oh, the last 15. perfect. But but he's he's great at that. I love Will. Yeah, he's the best with the crowd work and yeah. the riffing. Uh, it's remarkable you have a new thirty minutes. It's not good. It's going to be an ugly thirty, my friend. It's gonna be fucking but terrible. But still, that's that's probably, List has a new forty-five. Yeah, he Since just put when? a special out. He's I don't know when he put a special out a month ago. No, really? A special's been out for a few months. Oh, has it a few yeah. months? I don't know, but but he's it's a tank. pretty early to have forty-five. No, but 
It's like, he's a, he's getting into stories more. Okay. And so he's putting together like an eight minute story here, a seven minute story uh, there, and it, it adds up. I was just texting Sam last night when I was walking home from the club. I was like, I need a story. It's such, I know. just to have a five minute chunk. Uh, you got to make some worse decisions, my friend. Uh, That's where they come from. All my fucking best doing stories. Your pod, aren't I? They come from me getting. <laughs> they come from me getting lit on the road. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, there we go. It's true. Yeah. Drinking helps with comedy. Drinking material. is healthy. I think so. Yeah. For art. BodegaCatSpirits.com. I got to admit, I had I did not have high hopes for <laughs> yeah. Bodega Cat. But you Cat. love it. I did, it's so fucking good. It's good And shit. I'm not even a, I'm not a rye, I drink, you know, whiskey or scotch, but yeah. Rye's underrated. Yeah. No one, everyone's, everyone's on the bourbon train, everyone's on the scotch train, getting the fucking rye train, And man. all these celebrities, spice. they're starting, they're starting whiskeys and they're all doing tequila and I'm like, yeah, yeah, stay over there. Yeah. Let us have the rye. Yep. Uh, Kevin Hart is a tequila. I'm like, you don't even drink. Get out of here. Come on, let All us right. have. You have everything else, Kevin Hart. You got unless, Jumanji Nine. Unless, unless you want to come on here, Kevin. We'd yes, love we'd love to have you. We'll get you a, a booster you. seat and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my. I brought Kevin Hart up once at the cellar. Like I was, they were just like, bring up Kevin Hart. You know, not even to the host, to me. I was on stage. Yeah. And I was like, all right, thanks a lot. I'm Kevin Hart. You know, I did my thing, yeah. my dumb thing. And then I was like. You guys are in for a treat. Kevin Hart. And I thought he'd be like, why'd you say you're Kevin Hart? But he didn't even hear it. Oh, really? Yeah, I was waiting for like a fun little He was exchange. literally, he got a call from his agent. He's like, 40 million, cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I meant, what, what did he say? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hold on, Spielberg. I got to <laughs> go on, but he was fun. He's a nice guy. Great guy, nice guy, funny guy. I, I met him once and he was fucking awesome. Great guy. Just very cool. Super I, nice. I was standing beside him right basically where that photo was taken and uh he was saying he was about to go on he was doing new stuff and he turned to me he goes yeah the car's picking me up like for set tomorrow at like 6 30 and it was like 1 30 or 2 in the morning wow like, he works and he's working new stuff he's like, working like, apps into a set he's like gets a huge laugh he's like oh, back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that's his act <laughs> i was doing the uh what's that mohegan sun i was in the comedy club and there's an arena there he was at the arena i was at the mohegan sun comedy club and i went to the gym i made it to the gym at like 11 a.m he was already in there just alone just going at it wow working out i leave I see him. I don't bother him. He's working out of the gym. I leave at like noon, you know, gamble a little, whatever, start drinking, fuck hang hooker, out, sure, fuck yeah. a hooker, go to yeah, the buffet. I walk back to the pool. I was like, ah, maybe I'll take a dip. And the pool is connected to the gym. And this is like four. Still in the gym. No. Kevin Hart. Are you serious? Swear to God. You think he maybe does like two sets? Or? Even still. So I crazy. mean, insane. That's he was insane. still there. Insane. So he is just that guy. He's a he's a warrior. He yeah. doesn't stop. He is fit. Oh, yeah. He's ripped. Huge dong, apparently. Really? 10 inch. Yeah. That's what Patrice would say. Really? Keith yeah. Robinson, too. Keith, too. Keith, Man, does Keith huge... Robinson, dude. Keith, his new material is so funny. He's great. Have you seen him? Keith Robinson has a new bit. So Keith is a great comic who mentored uh, Kevin Hart. And a lot of like... And a lot of Philly guys. Yeah. But Keith has, you know, he's had his second stroke and he's a new bit about how... <laughs> He's a new bit about how he sometimes forgets he's disabled and will catch himself laughing at other disabled people. <laughs> that's a great premise. And they just look at him like, yeah, you too. He's like, oh, all right, shit. Oh, that's brilliant. It's fucking great. You want to talk about having a new hour. He just had a second stroke and has a new hour. He's, a he's wow. doing hours at the at the cellar. He's like working on I it. I love Keith Robinson. Stroke yeah. genius. He might be one of the coolest dudes I've he ever might met be. in my life. The he's funniest. Like, yeah. Funniest, coolest. The best ball buster best on the planet. Because be, he does it. He, he does does actually it right loves way. everybody. Yes. He does it the Comes right from way. love. Yeah. And, and his it, laugh is so fucking funny. If you hit him back, he laughs. Oh, it's 100%. Not like, it's not mean. It's supposed to be like play. Yeah. You go, I go, or whatever, but it's just great. He's, He's a classic. But he came, he tells stories about like, the old school yes. seller when like Patrice and everyone would bust balls and he he told me a story about like cruising in with a new sweater and he's standing in the doorway he's standing in the doorway and someone yelled from the table like made fun of it. like he knew like okay I'm like you know this is a risk yeah and he said he just remembers like you just turn around and leave because you couldn't spend the whole night uh, you know what I mean yeah of course of course it's so different now he followed, I know. Me, he followed me on stage the other night and they were bad they were really bad and I got off I was like dude they're really bad and he goes 
we'll see, like cocky. Yeah. And then he went up and he goes, they were really bad. Nah, I didn't believe you. And then he, we followed each other. He followed me like three straight shows. And after every show, he'd be like, you better not fuck me again. <laughs> I put it on you. It on That's me. great. Good. So, yeah, he's so good. And a lot of people try to do what he does, but they don't have this. He's special because he has some warmth to him. He'll laugh at you. These other guys are like, they're just cocky and mean. Yeah. But he's cocky, mean, but he's got heart. And he likes you. It's an art. It's balls. an art. Absolutely. He's perfected it. He's cocky, mean, but also he's busting your balls and he's got that thing where he's so revered yes. that it's an honor that he's even like focusing on you. Of course, of course. I remember when I was brand new at the cellar, he was trashing me all night one night and Gary Goldman drove me home one night and Gary in the car... Uh, I said, is it weird how much he shits on me? And he was like, are you kidding me? I'd kill for him to shit ah, on me that much. Yeah. He was like, jealous that he was shitting amazing. on me that much. It's like Rickles. Yeah. You want him to trash you. You want it, the, yeah. the, And another thing about Keith, how you were, how Sam was saying earlier that you got to like live a life or whatever, Keith has life experience. Oh, my God. Yeah. It just the depth. That's why he's so great. Yeah. I love him. We got to get him on here. Yeah, yeah. He's we got, really a, gotta he's got some here. stories. He's got like 12 baby mamas. He's got nine kids. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun stuff. That's not true. <laughs> I know. 100% untrue. I'm, I'm trying to make him more. <laughs> no, no. That was a complete lie. Well, well he's got, got a, I think he's got one kid. Yeah. He's got some stories about he baby moms. He definitely has stories. Sure. I, I, I peppered my own uh, interpretation <laughs> in there. But uh, he's, got, he's got some fun stories. Well, baby mamas. Where the yeah. fuck did they And only nine well, kids. He's got uh, like the, the lady throwing the shirts out of the window story. Oh, no. He's, he's got, got that got, shit. He's got crazy stories. Plus, he likes Sammy he said he like fucking mentored everyone from oh Philly. yeah oh yeah and i think we need a little of that I, I don't want comics to be mean i don't want people to hurt other people's feelings blah 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 but that needs to be a little put in check in comedy yes we were missing that and also the one he does it with warmth it's not yes. done in a way like i'm gonna hurt you it's a way like i'm gonna fucking pl i'm gonna t like dude I had Bodega Cat. I was Liz bought a Bodega Cat at the cellar the other night, and the second Keith heard it, he was like, "Oh, you and Mark Norman have a whiskey." <laughs> Colin Quinn starts shitting on me. There you go. Uh, even Ryan Hamilton, you know, you don't expect to be the Whoa. guy to shit on you. Ryan goes, "Oh, I'm with a name like Bodega Cat, you know, it's going to have widespread appeal. <laughs> like, everyone's trashing us." That's Colin beautiful. Quinn's like, "I'm furious. I'm furious. You guys are making a whiskey." But then, the, of course, at the end of the night, I'm telling. Texting Norman about it. He's like, but you're glad they're saying it to our face. Yes. yes. There's, yes. Nothing yes. Wor there's nothing worse than leaving and being like, you get a load of these jerk offs. I oh, know. they're like, great idea. Then you leave. Well, we, yeah. I mean, if this wasn't being recorded, we could name 10 comics that don't get it to their face. Of course. And that's the ultimate insult. Oh, that's the. Because that means we mean yeah, it. Yeah, you're not, yeah, exactly. You're not really a comic. There's nothing worse than someone being nice to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. In a sense. Yeah. Well, that's what, you know, like, oh, I love your haircut. You know, like women do that. Then they walk yeah. away and, like, she's fucking lesbian. She'll never get laid or whatever the hell. You know, you want the. 12 truth. baby mamas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, the name of the zip. <laughs> um, but. But, uh, yeah, like that, it, that's from okay, going back to watching a comedian and moving to New York. That's what fucking blows my mind is like tonight shooting the shit with Colin Quinn. I know. It's who, insane. Who is cooler? No one is cooler. We still think of like, you know, that's the thing. It's like we're still comedy nerds. So it's like crazy that we know David telling Colin Quinn. Insane. Yeah. Like yeah. he'll call me at like 3 a.m. last night. It was one of those calls where I get it like. He just texts me at 3 a.m. and I'm like, I'm up. Yeah. And, I, and it's like, it's like a you up text, but just a check in call. You yes. know? Yeah. And we're just shooting the shit. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm on the phone with David Tell. He's like the greatest comic ever. I know. Yeah, crazy. I talked to him today and my lady walked in the room and I'm like, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to, I was like in the zone. I was talking to David Tell, so I didn't want to like have any distractions. Yeah. And she was like, what was that? What were you talking to? I was like, David Tell. She's like, oh, okay. I get why you were behind the couch. You know, you didn't want <laughs> any <enough>. sounds. Yeah. <laughs> I was naked. <laughs> it's hard. But uh, I had to just, I had to be present with David Tell. You oh, know? yeah, 100%. You don't want to be on the sidewalk like, hold on, Dave. There's a guy yeah. walking by. You know, you want to throw the David cat Tell in the window. Text line. Yeah. Almost. <laughs> yeah. Almost. <laughs> Hmm. Now. Yeah, yeah. Was he asking you if someone had a bit like that? No, he was asking me about some clubs he's doing. And he's I like, told him that he was good? asking about a club in Louisville. And I said, Norman just played there. So so he called me. and uh, I'm playing there. I wasn't ready for it. So I was like, oh. So oh, I, that's, yeah. You want to be, the corner and, you be ready for that. Oh, yeah. It was out of the blue. But we, we, we did like 30 minutes on call. 
And I got a couple laughs, and that's all you want. He's the best. Yeah. I had a call like that. And then you, I don't even know if you knew that I was on the phone. Huh? It was like two Sundays ago. I was visiting, uh, I was visiting, I was visiting someone, and out of state. <laughs> Yeah, that's, Phil that's is that's fucking that. his baby mama. One of the twelve. <laughs> yeah, one of the, the dozen. I was visiting, visiting someone. Yeah. This is a great. Uh, <laughs> this podcast is getting more and more cryptic. Hey, yeah. You talk like a, like a Baptist I preacher. Was, like, hey, hey, I was visiting someone. Anyways, I'm, this could be one of nine women that Phil is talking about. I'm, whichever one. Uh, good yeah, job. Whichever one. I love you, baby. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I was scantily clad, just you know had you know whatever post coitus is something like that okay and uh the phone rings it's like an la number and like she pulled the butt plug out of your ass <laughs> yeah uh, not yeah. yet <laughs> <laughs> no so i pick up the phone it's yeah. bert and he's recording a podcast and he's oh, asking wow. me yes he's and i'm like eh. bert and kreischer yes and he's asking me about watches and we're talking about watches or whatever and then he's like oh shit and then so we're talking and then Whitney phoned you yeah and uh, I realized how much better you are at podcasting than me because they asked you about shoplifting or something and like at a drop of a hat I was like I answered and was like oh hey oh what's uh, up like it took me a minute to figure out it was being recorded or whatever Norman was like off to the radio he's like ah I shoplift <laughs> you're gonna kill me yeah he's like going off like, <laughs> well, shoplifting I didn't know and, you were on the phone I well I, we were wrapping my segment up. I had no. To this day, I think it was being recorded. I had, I don't. I'm sure fully it was. Know. I'm sure it was. I fully. I didn't know, but for a minute, I thought they were just asking me like a watch question. Yeah. And then, but it was funny because he's like, "Oh, I think Whitney's calling Norman." And within two seconds, you were off like talking about shoplifting. Well, I figured if, if they're calling me, it's gonna be recorded. I didn't know who. The, it just came up a blank number. Ah, uh, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. This business is so silly. I know. If that person calls me, it's gonna be for everyone. Yeah, exactly. That's what it means. That's crazy. Crazy. That's I know. crazy the world we're in, we're in but whatever. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. I'm seeing him soon. I'm excited to see him. Who? Bert. Where are you seeing Bert? Pod. Oh, you're doing the LA pod? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. It's at his house. Wait till you see his house. I can't wait to really? see his house. Really? Uh, dude, he lives next to uh are you supposed to be saying this? Ah, uh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> he lives next to Henry Winkler. Bleep that out. But, Famous uh, dyslexic. Yeah, right? Yeah, he yeah, is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Princeton dyslexic, I think. Or I mean, yeah, Yale, something. Yeah, that's where we met. Q from Brooklyn, I think. Yeah, legend. Check that. I think he's a Brooklyn guy. But either way, his house, it's, it's everything you want in a house. He's got a giant gym in the back and a shed. Really? And Does he know that? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, the gym uh, had a lot of dust on it. <laughs> but... Uh, Oh, Manhattan. I was close. Okay. Einrich. I heard he's the nicest guy in show business. I heard the same business. thing. Yeah. Everybody says he's the best. Yeah, he's so good on Barry. God dang, he's good in Barry. Barry's a great show. Yeah, Barry's good. 76. Uh, so yeah, Bert's out. He's got the fire pit. He's got the pool. He's got the hot tub. He's got the back deck with the barbecue pit. He's got a podcast studio. He's got the man cave. He's got a home theater. It's insane. Wow. Incredible home. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all you see is like L.A. in the news and it's like homeless and fires and, you know, shootings. And then you go to Bert's house, you're like, I get it. I get why people live here. The weather's perfect. I'm in the hot tub with the high life, you know, just living it up. That's the thing about being super rich. You're like, yeah, things are going to be okay wherever you are. I know. I know. Exactly. You, you could be in Saudi Arabia. You got money. You're like, things are good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm looking around. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And then he was in, I got there early and he was shooting a podcast with Mike Birbiglia. So then Mike Birbiglia and Bert walk out of this garage and yeah. you're like, where am I? This is yeah, the craziest wild. life. Yeah. Fun, fun showbiz. It's fun. Showbiz, baby. Showbiz, baby. Then Bobby Lee showed up and we did an episode. <laughs> Love it, man. Good times. What, any, uh, any Rex, Phil? Ooh, good question. <clears throat> oh, and I haven't done my pet peeves. Oh, oh, oh shit. Yeah, give and the I haven't thing. done the first. new bit. Whatever right. you got. Oh, yeah. Um, what I recommend, uh, one thing, and you listened to it and you loved it, I recommend, and you'd get a kick out of it too, I think. Uh, uh -huh. Lay it on me. Uh, the Ween Country album. Whoa. Sammy? It's mad good. It's so good. I like Ween. So Ween. Anything Phil pushes this hard, I'm like, I got to give it a go. It's damn good. Ween. So Ween, I believe the story was that Ween owed like one extra uh, record on some contract. And they were like, 
wanted to like we'll show you this could be untrue but okay they, they, we'll show you and they went to, i do know they went to nashville and they recorded this album with the jordan airs which were elvis's backup band wow japanese cowboys are good one. japanese cowboy so they do they it's a country album okay. and each tune is a different type of country like there's like that like 70s like trucker like driving an 18 wheeler yeah. over the town line country sure. then like a country ballad right and uh yeah, and the lyrics are hilarious. It's fucking great. So I recommend the Ween country album. But also listen to the fucking Grateful Dead. Listen to American Beauty. Hell yeah. Listen to Working Man's Dead. Yeah. Then go live with Europe 72. <laughs> and then treat yourself to like spring 90. Okay, yes. boy. And this guy, nobody knows more about the dead than uh, you. I, I know for a civilian, I know I know a lot. Yeah. Well, what do you think about the, the Garcia band? Oh, fuck. I love the Garcia I, I band. I love them too, but Dude. I feel weird. I'm like, it's this not the dead, but no. it is the dead, but the, they're part Jerry, of the dead. Jerry Garcia band. I mean, it is, it feels very spiritual. People, like heads call it like church music. Yeah. And you know what's great about the dead is they give you hope as an artist, quote unquote. I hate saying that, but they never hit it big, no. really. But they tour everywhere. They're sold out they, everywhere they go. Well, they, they start not hit it big? No. Well, they, start, they started in 65, and they built their following by... Basically, they did what comics do now by telling fans to follow them. Uh -huh. They sent out... One of their albums said... Uh, dead, uh, dead freaks unite. Who are you? Where are you? And people would send in postcards, and then they would mail out information about the tours and all the wow. stuff. They let all their fans. They had a section in the stadium where you could tape all the shows. What? So once they played it, the music was the fans. So there's over two thousand shows you can listen to, and uh, they started in '65. Their first hit was in like whenever Touch of Grey came out, '87. Yeah. It oh wasn't even God. yes. So it that was the first, one and that's what twenty-two uh, years in. Yes, and that, but that's what where the problem was because then they became super, super popular. But in the nineties, they were like the most popular. They'd sell out Soldiers Field like two nights in a row. Wow. Yeah. Well, there you go. You see, if it's good, it's good. It doesn't have to be commercially successful. Look at that beautiful man with a smile. Yeah, and Jerry was just like to see him perform was. Oh, you saw him? Yeah, when I was a kid. Yes, it was unlike anything. What was so special about it? He just had a thing. And there's, there are people that put it more articulately than I do. Or, and like, you know, like famous musicians or whatever. He just had this this thing you can't put your finger on. He was just such a great performer. And everyone would focus on him. And everyone would follow each note. And he would do things. I remember once I had my eyes closed. And I said to, uh, I was with like an older like friend of the family. So I was like. What, what just happened? Because the crowd goes crazy. Sure. Like, what just happened? They go, Jerry lifted his leg. Oh, like, my People were God. so focused on him. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was just such wow. He was just such an incredible performer. But, if yeah, if you listen to Jerry Garcia Band, you kind of get an idea of, because he's got the backup singers, and he just, he like a comic, he just worked. He'd tour with the dead, and then he would want to go back on the road, and he'd immediately tour with um, Jerry Garcia band yeah but it, that's like it feels like it's got like a gospel like yes. spiritual total community yeah vibe. It's, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's a love it's, fest how did he die <clears throat> he he died it's really sad so in, he went into uh, rehab and he died that night in rehab of uh, OD a, heart, a heart failure or heart like heart attack heart tip failure mm. but he also he did you know he did partake in narcotics but he also he didn't have a very uh, healthy diet sure sure yeah. he's a big dude yeah damn yeah, yeah. but uh, so I recommend starting because people are always like where to start with the dead I'd say American Beauty I'm gonna get I'm gonna do it yeah I mean it's just yeah. great and then uh, Working Men's Dead and then if you want to delve into live then Europe 72 and then just go crazy maybe a little Spring 90 yeah the music's so I listen to it when I write a lot I'll oh, put a Grateful Dead kind of mix yeah and it goes all over to the Garcia band Grateful Dead and yeah. then other shit later but I, I write all, all the time on it but then when that one fucking song uh, the Clarice what is it Charisse uh Oh, Ruben and Cherie. Yes, when that song. Whoa, this is a deep cut. I'm I, impressed. Oh, really? Yes, that song is so beautiful. Dude, I have to stop writing and just listen to it. I have. Amazing. I have a story about Ruben and Cherie. Oh, please. So, the, Ru Ruben and Cherie was a Jerry Garcia band tune. The Dead did play it like a couple times in the 1991. Uh -huh. And you hear the live. If you put Ruben and Cherie live, Dead 91, you hear the crowd because they knew it was a Jerry Garcia band. And uh. for the Dead to play it, the crowd just goes fucking. Bonkers! It's my favorite song of theirs, dude. It's amazing. But uh, he cheats on his Ruben cheats on Sharice. Uh huh. 
And I met a woman one night. We were in Vancouver. We were partying. And there's this girl named Sharice. And we were partying and da-da-da-da. We're hanging out. And um, at the end of the night, we're like, everyone's saying goodbye. And I said, I go, I love your name. I go, it's the name of uh, my favorite Grateful oh, Dead God. tune, Sharice. And she started crying. And she goes, I know, but he, the Ruben cheats on Sharice. And I'm like, he doesn't cheat on her. <laughs> Uh, he doesn't cheat on her. Uh, and then years later, I found out, yeah, I listened to the lyrics over again. I'm like, hey, don't look cheating uh, on her or whatever. Okay. But she was quite uplifted when she found out so that who Ruben was didn't she? cheat on her. She was a, I, I somehow, thought she was the girl in the song. That's what I was No, out. no, okay. no. She was just she was just a, a woman that I guess her parents were deadheads and they named her after Oh, okay. Charisse. Damn. Yeah, yeah, but that's a great tune. Great it's a, tune. It's a beautiful love song, yes. but he does, I think he does uh, ah. cheat with someone from the audience. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, there is, you go. Yeah, Ruben was a comic. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yeah, and they're so like they. they I mean, this guy does not look like a, a rock star, but he, he no, just is. I no, love that too. He's they just who all he is. were like that. They never gave in to any trends. I mean, Jerry's there. I'm sure wearing uh, black track pants. Yep, yep. And they all look totally different. Bruce Hornsby's in the house for the early '90s. Yeah, it's like David Tell. It's just about the art. It's not about the look or yeah. how cool I am or the celebrity. Yeah, look at Phil Lesh. He looks like a shop teacher. Yeah, exactly. Wait, exactly. Can turn it up a little, or is that what you? Oh, is this it? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so they only it. played this tune a few times because it was a Jerry tune. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, Scarlet Begonias and all the other big touch classics. of gray are great yeah. classics. But this but... is a deep, deep... This really? Is a pretty, well, I mean, not for Jerry Band, but for the dead, yeah. All right, this is my favorite by far. What I like to do is I just put in a show in YouTube and I just... Lo like I just, So I don't look at the thing. I just have it playing in the... You can put in anything. Like, I'll yeah. go... MSG and just right. listen to like they would used to play eight nights at MSG. So do you dig fish and all that or is it? No, is I never that, got into fish. I never did either. But that again, talk about following. Yeah, I mean, they, they sell at the Garden four times. They sold at the Garden thirteen times for they did this like Baker's dozen. Unbelievable. Thing yeah. Um, no, I don't know. I just I just like the dead. I never really got into fish. I, I understand why people like it. Yeah. But and I think if I yeah I just I don't know I just had this thing for the dead since I was a kid because. Bob Weir was dyslexic, and when I found oh. that out when I was a kid, I just liked it. How about that? Yeah, there you go. Uh, there you go. Yeah. He was an acid guy. Though, well, they all were. Yeah. Well, there you go. All right, good wreck. Good wreck. You see the passion. I mean, I pe love it. People no, have I told me it, you got to do a, a dead pod. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I've tinkered with it. I. I it's like hard. I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I've thought you, of it. You, you have so it's such a wealth of information, and you you, it's can, my you favorite light up. Topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's basically all I like to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we should give a shout out to uh, Marcus Price. Yeah, he did the special. Yes. Yeah, Marcus right. did a great Marcus. job. Marcus great Price. guy. Great Marcus guy. Russell Price on Instagram and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. Think, yeah. I can't wait to see the finished product. But I mean, uh, I mean, I was there. It was it was killer. So uh, He's definitely. A, Big, big. I mean, he does like our shit, Schumer shit, your shit, Pete Davidson, John Mulaney, Aziz. He's like Hannibal. He's everywhere. It's basically if you see a great comedy photo, a live yeah. photo, chances are he took it of totally. someone these days. He does everybody. Oh yeah. All right, and uh, you, you, should we do bits or is that crazy? Uh, yeah, let's do a bit. All right. Why is that crazy? I don't know. I don't know if we're how, how long we're going or whatever. Yeah, Phil, well, you got something? Uh. I have a I, okay. So this is a bit. So can we just do premises? Yeah, yeah. that's what we prefer. Un uncooked, half baked. This is fucking. I've tried to put this in the oven so many fucking times. Okay. I it love just an go, oven. And you both know it. And poor Better Sam. not be a Jew. <laughs> Sam has heard this a million times. I've probably talked to you about it too, Norman. Okay. But I have the the premise is that hooking up with an ex. Is the closest we can come to time travel. Ah, uh, mm. I love this already. A great premise, yeah. But it will not. Is it just for people that sleep with their exes? No, I think you just need the perfect time travel cliche. I, you know what, dude? It's I've spent like after like the movie Back to the Future, but instead of like a guy, old guy with white hair, it's a woman who just knows a few new sex positions. Right, right. Oh yeah, I mean, that. Like, yeah. I don't know, like. I like the prime. I tried like the angle of like going back to the future, but like because you've had sex with a bunch of other people, all of a sudden you know, you know, like more. a bunch of old moves. Like, yeah. It's like showing up in the like 80s with an iPod. Like it's like <laughs> you, funny. you blow the person away. I cannot get the audience on board. Yeah. And I've tinkered with it for a long time. 
Yeah, right. That is a tough one. And I've Googled. This bit is like a time machine. It really is. Yeah. I can't, but you can't perfect it. <laughs> I've, I've tinkered I, and I've like Googled like, excuse me, time travel cliches and all that shit. Yeah. It's hard. Maybe the problem is that Back to the Future is so is the kind of the ultimate time travel movie. Sure. And it's so old that a reference from Back to the Future oh, yeah. doesn't fly anymore. Time travel. Time travel. They, you know, there's also that other thing of like, you know, they say you go back in time, you step on one twig and it changes the course of the earth or whatever. The yeah, hell. like I've tried that, like about like pregnancy, like right. wearing a condom and all that stuff. Yeah. It is wild though. Hooking up with an ex is a monumental event. Yeah. Because it is kind of like time travel. You're like, should I be doing this? Yeah. Am uh-huh. I, I going to fuck up something in the future? Yeah. Right. You know, like... Uh, right. Damn. Am I fucking up the balance? Yeah, the balance. Exactly. It's tough. Because it needs to be simplified. It needs that one perfect angle. Because it's a good premise, but it's loose. Yeah, oh, it's loose. So we got to dilute it down to that like, one thing. You know, like, people always say, I would kill baby Hitler, but you're like, I would fuck Sharon one more time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah if good. she had a baby, I'd kill that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Uh, damn, that's good. Oh, yeah. What's the? Because remember, tough. David Tell had that bit about uh, you ever want to go back and fuck somebody you fucked twenty years ago to show them how much yeah. better you are at it. Look who's not crying. Not crying. Yes, yes. Classic Tell. Classic. Yeah. yeah. Made it past your thigh. Ah, <laughs> uh, then maybe ah, uh, shit. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one. It is tough. Let, let me noodle on it. You noodle, baby. I almost want to pull up like a pull out a Jules Verne book and and leaf through it for some ideas. Yeah, I want to Google Jules Verne. Uh, he wrote the Time Machine. Oh, really? Yeah. He, there's a book called The Time Machine. Oh yeah. Really? Was that H.G. Wells? H.G. Wells. That's H.G. Wells. Sorry, Jules uh, Verne wrote uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. I don't, actually don't know. Oh boy, he's a writer. What did he write? Oh boy. Okay, he wrote. Uh, Journey to, didn't he write Journey to the Center? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well played. What uh yes, somebody Around the World in eighty days. Yeah, I don't know. Time travel, uh uh uh-huh. Ah shit. Yeah, it's a tough one. Going back in time. I think we're looking too hard. I think it's a simple thing. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. Like, it's never not for it's never for free. Mm, There's uh-huh. always, it always comes with a consequence. Right? You're gonna hurt the future, yeah, in some way. That's why you wear. A condom. Did you step on a leave? Yes. You're like, no, I fucked her. Like, like it's like uh, now you're like, oh shit. Space time continuum. 100. Maybe you know what you always learn, kind of in these time travel movies, that the future is kind of like accepting the present is better than the past. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Maybe the angle is you're like, yeah, man, turns out that wasn't a good idea. You know what the I mean? The future That's is like, bleak. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but don't I think maybe the problem is there hasn't been a big time travel movie recently. <laughs> that would help. Um, what about Inception? Isn't that is that time travel? That's like time bending. Oh, shit. Okay, it's like in dreams and stuff. It's uh, can you relate to that when you yes. do sleep with an ex? It do, it feels like all of a sudden everything feels like you're back. It in was ten years ago. Ten years ago. Yeah, you go right back to it. That's why it's. It, I love the press. It's so relatable. Yeah, you're laying in her bed again. The smells. Yeah, her bed. The smells. The feet. Like even I swear to God, your genitals have a memory, man. Yes, yes. You're like oh, here we go. The inside jokes are the same. Yeah. I'm thinking of a memory foam joke uh, with the mattress. <laughs> I, gave, I once pitched a memory foam joke to you, and it's the only time you fucking let me have it. Ah, uh, well, there's a lot of those. Yeah, out there was. There. I didn't know. I hadn't been going to it's, open mics in a long time, it's and I been went. Done. Yeah, it was done to death. I learned, I learned a valuable lesson. Yeah, is it hot in here or am I gay? It feels warm. Maybe it's the flannel. <laughs> it's right. the flannel. Yeah. Whew, I'm sweating. All right. Yeah, dude. I'm telling you, there's I'm something with memory this. foam confrontation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you All right, what do you got? I so this one I might have pitched by you guys. I can't crack it. There's something here. Okay. I, I haven't said this on the pod, have I? About the Elon Musk <laughs> joke, have I? About how like I say what he's got like eight kids, and I say what I think unites the ultra rich and the ultra poor is that they will come in anything. <laughs> yeah, That's my I premise. This. They will come. They'll both come in anything. I think it's like the ultra rich are like, yeah, I'm rich. It'll work out. And poor people are like, I mean, I'm fucked anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I can't afford one kid. I'll just have twelve. It's so true. That's like the ultra like luxury and also like, yeah, I'm fucked. Let's have some fun. Uh-huh. Let me nut inside this person. 
I can afford eight kids, and what's the difference anyway if I have eight kids? Right. That's yeah. kind of the angle. I yeah. Think. I don't really know where to go. There's a mom in a trailer with eight kids running around. She's on welfare. She can't afford yeah, any of a, it. Or a mom with eight trailers. Yeah. <laughs> and Elon Musk is like, oh, I got eight kids. I'll just go to Mars. I can't believe he's got yeah. eight kids. Yeah. Dude, yeah. He might have more. I mean, I, I think eight. Nick Cannon has more than that, by the he, way. Nick Cannon has he's nine. He's got a lot of kids. Damn. Yeah, that's funny. You don't want to be a middle class person with eight kids. Well, yeah, they're like, I have th- some things I could lose. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, wow. That's just a hard eight right there. Boom. What about Nick Can? He's got nine. Nine. Wow. That is wild. That's child abuse, if you ask me. Yeah. I guess he can afford it. Oh, he's eight. got eight. One died. I think he has nine. All right. He <laughs> said one died. Yeah, he got rid of one. <laughs> Maybe number nine. Yeah. Wait, that's confusing. All right. I like the kid's name is Zen. We don't think about you. <laughs> the, the ninth baby's name was Oops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oops Cannon. That's not bad. <laughs> Oops Cannon. Uh, um, that's the... Oh, never mind. All I'll right. Fucking, let's I'll see. figure it out. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. I'm j- We're fried. Go with it. We're fried. We've been drinking all day. We're bad at comedy. Poorest and the richest. That's where they intersect. Yeah. Maybe that, yeah, that's like the only thing they have in common. Yes, yes. Um, you don't know what it's like, you know, the poor people are mad at, at Elon Musk. You don't know what it's like to be uh, to be broke like us, you rich piece of shit. And he's like, well, we have the same amount of kids, you know. Right, right. Or yeah. you do the same thing to commiserate or to celebrate. And it's just, you're the same. Sex. Com- yeah. Yeah. Or like ejaculating and they're both apparently against abortion you know they're both like no that's wrong because elon's all about he's like we got to populate really yeah. and then the poor people like we just like fucking he's all about we need to populate also he's like we got to get to mars yeah yeah that's true he wants to populate and leave which yeah. one is it yeah interesting what do you got Ah, uh, mine sucks. You guys, the yours are like you guys both have like a rich idea. Mine yeah, well, is silly. Both rich ideas. Yeah, we no can't fucking go line. anywhere. We can't crack them. Yeah, I got a couple of those, but I'll try a, 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 a quick one. So you know, I think like most kids when I was younger, I'm talking really young. I wanted to be black. You want to be black? It's cool. They're cooler, mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. And so I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. I went to public school. So if you got called the N word, it was exciting. So I wonder if there's people transitioning. Who like a guy transitioning into a woman, and somebody's like, "Ah, you cunt!" They're like, "I made it," <laughs> you know, because I'm a woman. You're calling me a uh, like a, a bitch, you know, like they get called a bitch. Like, thank you. He realizes I'm a woman. Yeah, the word "cunt" is like it's not appropriate, except for this time. It's it is kind of welcoming. Where, it's where, kind of welcome. Like, hey, yeah. you, this guy's a dick, I guess, but at least he sees me as a lady. Yeah, I someone go, says this bitch is on the rag, and they're like, "Thank you." Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel recognized. I feel recognized. <laughs> That's a good, good, good way to put it. Yeah, because you know, I'm obviously not black, but if you got called an N word, you're accepted. Yeah, and you're you're in. Even yeah. though that is a horrible word, much like cunt, you don't yeah. want to be called a cunt. But if you're in that position, it's the best thing you could ever hear. Not the best thing, but it's, it's something for sure. It, you yeah. know, it means like this guy definitely thinks I'm a lady. Yeah, who I, who I feel like inside. Yeah, he's like you bitch. You're like that means so much to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. There's something there. Louis had that old bit uh, about he. he grew up with this guy who was like the meanest kid then he transitioned and he tried to reach out to the lady and she was mean to him and he went he went he goes for you went from a dick to a cunt (laughs) (laughs) that's louis but that's solid yeah yeah but all right i think there's something here the n-word cunt maybe we'll try i'll try it tonight fuck it well watch phil's special on youtube uh right now please it's called ooh la la yes ooh la la it's killer killer great special the time travel bit is not in there so great. give it a check. Great comic, Phil. You got- <laughs> yeah. You, Can you I plug work? San Francisco? Please. Yeah, you're in SF next yeah, week, right? Yeah, come see me in San Francisco from the 5th to the 8th. One yeah, of the like best San clubs. San Diego as well coming up. Yeah, I'm San oh, Diego. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah the yeah, 27th, 28th, 29th. Two but, of the best cities. But yes. SF for me, San Francisco, that's the first. Uh, Molly was the first person to like middle for me to feature in america on american ground Whoa. yes and what then, a great room to start in by yes the way. and then the first uh headline club to headline me 
Yeah. Amazing. And I normally play there the weekend before uh, the Dead play Shoreline. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I do the punchline, and then I go to the Dead. That's it's a beautiful. Mere, magical week. I know. I lo- San Francisco, is. I, I love it. And San, to me, San Francisco feels like half Vancouver, half New York City. I can see that. Really? Do you see that? Some I people argue that. with me. No, I can I love see it. the, the, I love the weather. It. SF is beautiful. Yeah. The, the airiness and the, the water, but it's still got the architecture. And yeah, the exactly. City feel. You, could, you could walk there. Uh, yeah. 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 Good great. call. Yeah. That's a great week. And SF, just a magical place. One of the best places. You Get Bodega Cat, bodegacatspirits.com. We love you for supporting it. Please watch my Netflix special. Same time for the uh, yes. Same time tomorrow. Let's Netflix. blow that up. I'll be in uh, Omaha, Phoenix, Lexington, New Brunswick, OKC, Springfield, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Happy Thanksgiving to me. Woo! Uh, some of the Kansas worst cities. City, Tacoma, <laughs> yeah, really. Spokane. <laughs> Jeez, Kill me Christ. now. Kill me now. Tour. Yeah. Oshawa. <laughs> really going Auschwitz. On a, you're going like on a, like a televangelist run. You know, I'll be in a tent in uh, the Fort Lord Wayne. has. Risen. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm in uh, San Jose, Orlando, Richmond, Iowa City, Lincoln, Minneapolis, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Vancouver, my uh, New Orleans. Vogue Theater? You're doing the fucking doing the Vogue, Vogue Theater? You know it? Of course I know All it. All right. That's the that hometown the boy. <laughs> yeah, Phil modeled there. He was in a G-string. I'll be the in The Wilbur? Jeans. You're doing the Wilbur? Doing the Wilbur. We're doing Zanies. We're doing the Fillmore. We're doing uh, something in New Haven, the Toronto, the Blue Note in Hawaii. That'll be interesting. Whoa. I'm taking some wacky gigs, folks. Yeah. Do it up, Yeah, man. yeah. Wilbur's really wacky. Do it for the story, <laughs> What are you thinking? Uh, well, Blue Note, that's a jazz club. That'll be... I, that's just... Uh, I want to go to Honolulu. Yeah. That'll be great. Uh, that's what the fans want to hear. <laughs> well, they know how to lose good. You guys right. are the best. We love you. Thanks for listening. Get our whiskey. Subscribe to the Patreon. We might be drunk pod at gmail.com. Email us. Send us packages at 251 West 39th Street. Nice. We might be drunk. Phil, the special's awesome. Thanks Check for out special. having me. We love you. You're one of our I, best buds. I love you guys. Thank you for having so, me. Drink but Bodega Cat. I'm, I'm not making any uh, money off it, but goddamn, it's good. I was shocked. Appreciate it, sir. Yeah. And yeah, check out Phil's special. And apparently, got an album out there. Ooh la la! I got yeah. Please don't chit chat while I'm pursuing my dream. That's <laughs> that's old. That's old. But check out Ooh la la. Please and follow him on YouTube. Instagram for clips. Instagram great, Phil great M Hanley with clips. Great bits. Follow Phil Phil M Hanley on uh, Instagram. Follow him on all the stuff. Uh, YouTube, TikTok, all that stuff. We love you guys. Thanks for listening. Comedy. Sunday's